let me help you out a little bit because this next part, this is, this is kind of tricky and it fits right into what we're going to be learning today. Uh, let me rewind a little bit. Let's just look at question one. Do you all agree with the numbers? Yeah? Um, I know some people look at this and they're like, really? Really? I doubt my calculator very much. But 256 is a square number. 16 times 16. It'll give you that very faithfully. You can check that if you wanted to. Uh, what are these threes about? What do they change about? Cube roots. Yeah, okay, so cube roots. How would you define, how would you explain what a cube root is to someone who's never heard of what a cube root is? Yeah, okay. Um, Yep. So like this is 10 times 10, yeah. we'll give you 100. Cool. So what's the difference over here? And the number is cubed, it's multiplied by itself. Yeah, very good. So if you go 7 times 7 times 7, that should give you 343. Okay? Um, I hope you know. You've got that there on your calculator, right? Where's the cube root? Because it's not one of the buttons, it's somewhere else. Where is it? Yeah, you've got to go shift and then... Cool. So you can see where it is and that'll be very useful for us. Okay, now actually, while we're looking at your calculators, can you keep it there? Because this is going to be very useful for us when we do this. I heard some people mention this before, but one of the quickest ways to be able to do this part thoughtfully and efficiently is to take all of these guys and convert them into decimals, okay? Hands up if you already did that. Hands up. Okay, so I need a bit of, um, a bit of help since you've already worked these out. Let's go... Three decimal places. Three decimal places. Can someone tell me what three sevenths is? Three sevenths? Anyone got it? Zero point? Four two eight. Thank you. I'll just put a four two nine. Four two nine. It rounds up. Yeah. A half, which Jake helpfully put on there. You don't need a calculator to work out is. Zero point, okay, if you want to get the accuracy. Sure, we talked about that. Who's got six elevenths? Who's got it? Yeah, Brian. 0 0.545. Yeah, right, okay. Uh, five ninths. Five ninths. Delage, say it again. 0 0.556. And this one, again, you don't really need a calculator to do. All right, now put your pens down for a minute. Put your pens down for a minute. Zero point. Okay, now, moving from 2A to 2B, right? We know, as coincidentally I've shown, that uh, those are in the right order, so we know which ones are bigger and which ones are smaller, but now that we've got decimal labels on these, we're a bit better equipped to work out, okay, which ones are close and which ones are far, okay? So for example, 0 0.5 is here, right in the middle. So if you think about, say, 0 0.429, okay? You need to look at how far you've measured that on your page. And I'm looking, everyone's done this slightly different length, which is fine, okay? And then you need to come back, well, how far is 0 0.429 gonna be on your scale, okay? So for example, <coughs> if this was 10 centimeters across, 10 centimeters across, how far back am I gonna have to come in order to make it accurately 0 0.429? It'd be about, if that was 10 centimeters, this would be about eight, about eight. Now, most of you don't have a diagram quite that, or a number line quite that large, which is fine. So you're gonna ratchet yours down a little bit. I'm gonna put mine on, and I wonder if you wanna compare if your relative differences are similar to mine. So this is three sevenths. These guys are gonna be right nestled up against each other. Maybe you're having trouble putting two separate lines, but that's okay. I'm gonna put them here and here. So let's make this one six elevenths. And this one, five ninths. This guy here is an easy way to work out roughly where you should go. What's halfway between 0 0.5 and 1? What's the halfway between that? 0. That's going to be 0. 0.75, right? So therefore, 0. 0.8 is just going to be just a little over that. So I'm going to put that there for fits. Are you happy with that? So you got all your relative positions there? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, now, I'd actually like you to rule that off because we're going to start a new topic today, hence the different kinds of review questions we've been doing. This is going to be a little tricky because I actually need to refer to the stuff that's on the board, the review questions that we did. So I'm going to change the heading, but I want you to still have what we just did in front of you, okay? So uh, let me make some new space. The heading you can make is Introduction to SURDS. S-U-R-D-S.
and keep your calculator there, it's going to be really handy. Right, so you've encountered sets before, uh, for at least a couple of years you've encountered them, because you've been doing this kind of thing, right? So you did all these square roots, you did all these cube roots, but I picked my numbers really deliberately. Some of you worked this out uh, halfway through doing the questions. Why did I pick, say, say these three numbers? Why did I pick 100, 256, and 9? What's special about them? Sarah? Yeah, when you take the square root of these guys, you just end up with something nice and neat. Okay? 100, 256, and 9, they're all squares. 64 and 343, what's special about those two? They are nice, neat cubes, right, of exact numbers, okay? And that's why your answers were also nice and neat. However, just grab your cal calculator out and just quickly check for yourself. If you try some numbers that are in between them, like just change a number by one. Don't take the square root of 100, take the square root of like 101, okay? The square root of 101 ends up being this garbled mess. You're going to get a whole bunch of decimal places after it, right? Who's got it already calculated on their screen? Yeah, Uri, can you read it out for us? Give me all of it. 10.04987562. Uh, dot, dot, dot. Okay? So your calculator is going to hand you those 10 or 12 decimal places to put in your calculator, but they really do go on forever. Now, this is really strange, because uh, do you remember when you converted these back to decimals? You remember when we did that so we could do this? Let's have a look at one like, say, 6 elevenths. Can you do that one in your calculator again? 6 elevenths, okay? If my memory serves, I think what you're getting is uh, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, and it just sort of does its thing. This is a special name when it repeats over and over again. Does anyone remember what it's called, Brian? Uh, it does start with R, but it's not quite reciprocal. It has to do with fractions. Anyone? And else, what do you reckon, Ray? Recurring. Recurring is just another word for repeating, right? And you can see, that's exactly what these numbers do, over and over and over again. In fact, all of them do. Can you do five nights? Can you do five nights? I'm pretty sure it's five, 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 five. It repeats yeah. even more than the other one did, okay? Even a weird one like three sevens, it doesn't look like it repeats, but just punch it in all the time. I think what you're going to get from memory is uh, four, two, eight, uh, is it five or seven yeah. next? Five, five seven, one? Four. Yeah. Oh, so close. Okay. Uh, one, four. Now, if you keep on going, your decimal places, it starts to repeat. <coughs> and your calculator can only give you 10 or 12 decimal places. If you've got a phone, which also has a calculator in it, and you turn it sideways so it'll give you more digits, you will find those same six digits over and over again. All these guys repeat. They're recurring. But this guy, square root 101, square root 102, anything you want to put that doesn't give you a nice neat number, it never repeats, ever. That's really weird, okay? And that's what gets at the heart of what a surd is. So underneath what you've written that, this is, I have no space, but I want you to remember our definition for a surd is a square root, or a cube root, or a fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, whatever kind of root that does this. See this non-repeating thing? How it just sort of does its weird thing forever? That's a surd. These ones we started off with, they're not surds. Why not? Yeah, they're whole numbers, they just stop. In fact, even if they're not whole numbers, go ahead, chuck this in your calculator. This is not a whole number. And when you put the square root in, you don't get a whole number. But what do you get? I think you get two and a half, if my memory serves, okay? Um, so that stops. See that two and a half or, or 2.5? You see it doesn't do that weird jazz music daz dancing on forever and doing something different all the time. It just stops. So is this a third? No. no. It's these weird objects that we're interested in. It's because they're weird that we're interested in them. We're going to explore them in this topic. Okay? So let me say that again in case you missed the sentence. Our definition for a third is a square root or a cube root or any kind of root, who's, now here's a, here's a phrase for you which I'll, um, I'll write on the board because it's important and a bit unusual, whose decimal expansion, that's what this thing is, we convert it to a decimal, that's what your calculator helps you understand, right? Whose decimal expansion never repeats, that's it, let me say that one more time, a third is square root or a cube root 
or any kind of root whose decimal expansion never ever repeats. And that's really weird. Right? That's why they're their own topic that we're going to look at over the next week and a half. Okay?